Welcome back to Mashuku Tensei. Uh, okay. Jabba's Incarnation. Anime Review, episode number 36. Sorry for a little grunting. I thought my microphone disconnected. So, we're, this is episode 36. We're discussing the 30... Yeah, I haven't moved on the bottom because basically of an error. I know the episode's called Afar. I know that. It is episode number... 39. Uh, this episode pretty much steps in the entirety of chapters 8 through 10 and almost the entirety of chapter 11, but they stopped at the third to last page of the chapter. Now, mostly put the stuff cut off on this episode is um, some side stuff, some daily life stuff, but they probably did it just to advance the story. It didn't really affect the story very much at all. Nope. So... The episode opens up with Rudius on his way back from school, and a mailman comes by. Yes, a mailman who gives him a letter from his father. Informing him they've actually found a location where his mother Pasta might be. She's actually in a labyrinth. That's book 12. I know I'm kind of spoiled, but that's basically the plot of basically book, book 12. So... Because they are bringing on this long journey to his next place. And by the way, the place is coming from the... They, they, they didn't mention the description of it in the book. But it looks like Japan. Well, feudal era of Japan. Imagine if Rudius actually went there. He'd probably be amazed at the fact they look a lot like his own country. So, he don't bring his, his sisters on the journey. Norn and Aisha. So, he has to basically... Uh, he has them go to him. And sends a friend of his that someone is very familiar with, and we'll find in the end of the episode who actually brought them. So, right afterwards, he gives basically he tells he tells Safi that of course that his sisters are coming. Now he now do you cut the scene out a bit of him giving a letter to her, but he mentioned the fact that he got the letter. I'm sure he may have given it to her off screen just for the fact he wasn't lying. So the fact also they they also have dinner. And he does some magic. And they also go about having children, possibly. So. Sorry about this. <laughs> Alright. So, pretty much, basically, right after that. Then, of course, he goes to school to speak with Naroshi. About... Well, he goes there to do more research on this spell circle, which this has been a thing since like book eight that these two have basically have hung out together. And they finally get the spell circle ready and ends up like everything's going fine and Rudy has noticed something wrong. There's a hiccup in this in the in the circle and it ends up partially burning. And she's very sad, asks him to leave for the day, and then he's like about the power and then all of a sudden she goes nuts. So he rushes back. Calls the kind of, we even had, they actually had, now they didn't mention this in the, in the book, like in the anime they show her basically banging her fist and all she's, I can't go home. Like she's so sad the fact this spell didn't work. And it turns out she's working herself to near exhaustion. And they, they don't, don't mention here the fact that he wants to go to Safi basically to heal her. So he carries her. So... Then, of course, he just runs into Zenobia and Julie, who, of course, they take her to the infirmary. And then they proceed to go to, basically, his home, where Zenobia carries her. And you have Rudy is carrying Julie, asking, like, has Zenobia feed you? Yes, he has. They can bring her care. He's like, sure, she's very surprised at the fact that Rudy's picked her up. So, they bring her home. Safi, of course, takes a day off for her bodyguard duties. They actually do mention in the book that, uh, because of the fact she's married... That she only has a bodyguard duty if, in fact, that Princess Arrow is in class. They don't put that here, but they still keep the bodyguard duty there, but they cut the portion of the fact that she's actually in class. So, and then they course at 28, and of course she's serious window. They cut a whole scene out here of her basically over time getting back, getting better. That they, they, they cut that out. Uh, I don't have a really big issue with that at all, per se, because you can probably assume, just by watching this, that probably happened off-screen, the fact that she got better, 
uh, because we see her later on the episode in basically back her room. Well, then, of course, Rudy is calls Zenobia, Julie, Cliff, and Alessi, who was the last episode of B. Safi's grandmother, and the fact that she's dating Cliff. So it's like, Cliff is dating an old lady, but an elf. So, and despite the fact that, well, the revelation that his classmate is, in fact, he's dating his classmate's grandmother, he is still determined to cure her of her curse. I'm like, dude, you do realize that this woman is, like, 60 years older than you, and yet you want to be the woman like her. Probably because she's beautiful. That's my guess, anyways. But, well, she's also an elf woman, so there's that. So, they basically come, of course, all about summoning. Of course, no, no, about summoning because they, they, of course, Cliff basically comes, Cliff and Zenobia comes an ancient idea to use multiple papers for the spell circle. And they bring it together and they try it. Of course, they tape it on the floor. Like, if you want, like, in a very strange formation, like, we have one on top. Like, best way to describe it, it's like, we have one here. One here, and then one facing a different direction, like this. That's kind of how they have in the episode. I know I use my phone in a couple of receipts, but that's the best way I can describe it. And it worked. Now, here's the thing. They summoned something. And, of course, the dimension is something related to mass application. It's like, could it be something similar to that? No, this is very small scale. It won't be like that at all. So, they summoned something. A plastic bottle. I should point out, though, nobody in this room except for Rudius and Naroshi know what this thing is. And then, of course, they all started with Safi, who's there, along with <laughs> the, the the current demon lords, uh, the, the current emperor's her fiance is there too. Now, of course, they do cut the moment out. Rudy has put Safi in his lap, and she gets heavily drunk. And, well, despite that, of course, he she, she he proceeds to carry piggyback style, and we can assume that she's drunk because she's passed out. And then he hears noise. He arrives home to find his sisters knocking at his door, and the person who brought them there is Rijard. First time he's been seen since the end of season one of the anime. Now, in terms of the books, he had not been seen since the end of book six. That was the last time he was seen. Because that child was on a path. The reason why he, he, he transported because he basically volunteered to do it. Now, here's something I did not get. Now, the book does not really explain this. Hopefully, it'll explain this maybe next episode. That, that, okay, so, he knows Rudy is to stay in the university. Now, they do, in fact, mention the book, they kept this out of the anime, that the leather he sent to Paul, that he got married, had not reached him yet. Excuse me. I'm like, okay, that's a minor thing, per se, to mention. Like, you could keep it part of dialogue, but no, they chose to cut it out, but... My guess is they'll probably bring it up when, when they adapt book 12. When, of course, Rudy's free his father again. In a very good story arc. Also, we see in a cam in this episode, Roxy makes the appearance. Yes, Roxy. Who should point out, though, she is not heavy speaking lines this whole episode. She is just there because she's part of Paul's party. Now... Eloise, they do mention in the episode the fact that she kind of knew, and of course she went up to see Rudius anyways. So, but, damn good episode. Loved it. I thought of time to do the air tree in it, but it's getting kind of late, so I'm going to have to do that tomorrow. But of course, I did find out today that apparently I have not only two in the work tomorrow, it's still three. Because now I got to do Blexus and two Smart to Moonlight Fantasy. But I found out. Okay. That Konosuba Season 3 dub is released tomorrow. I'm like so happy about this. Because this will be the first time I've watched present day Konosuba. Not counting the explosion. That's a pickle. First time we do a season of the anime 
since 2020, since I watched the series back in 2020. So, this is the first new thing that's not the prequel one. First time in four years. I'm not sure why it was delayed this year. Could they just release last year? I don't know, but we'll find out. Now, I did check. All the voice actors are back. No change. Uh, don't know. I don't think Brandon Kabaka, her character, Weiss, is in season the book. Because it looks like, and I was definitely correct about this, they're starting with book six. Yep. They're starting with book six. How long will it take? I don't know. My biggest hope for this season is I pray to God it's not ten episodes. Because the first two seasons were ten episodes. Nowadays, with seasons being a little longer, I pray to God it's not ten. I want to see at least 12, 13 episodes. What's wrong to have a season have that long? Good question. I hope to God they have more than two books this season. I hope so. Because... The Explosion anime practically adapted all three main books in 12 episodes. Yes. Yes, they did. So, we'll find out about that tomorrow. Which one do tomorrow? Probably do Carlos Super first and then do Two Summons and Moonlight Fantasy, okay? And probably cap it off with Blue Exus. And probably do Comic Corner too. And yes, we want One Piece tomorrow, so there's that. So, that's going to be pretty much it for particular view. Uh, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications, and do not hit the dislike button. And see you tomorrow. Bye.